It's a letter to what could have been my lady, wife, and my best friend. And say if you love it, let it. What's good guys, it's Joseph and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to sync sniping clips with Time Your Map. Um, I've, done a, I've done a tutorial in the past how to sync sniping clips with Twixter and I'm just going to go over how to do a Time Your Map because I haven't done it yet and I kind of forgot about it. I was going to do it a while ago and I just kind of forgot about it. So let's go ahead and get started right in After Effects. As always, the project file is going to be in the description below. So go ahead and check that out and we're basically going to be recreating the preview that we saw in the beginning of the video same clip and everything so I'm gonna go ahead and delete pretty much everything but the song just so we can uh, start fresh and so there we go I'm not gonna go through the like the song itself and like how to make like how to split it up because I've, I've done that before pretty much just you know find like press L twice on the song and you know drag these things over to the uh, spot in the song where you want to have them so that's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to drag the clip in. And then what the first thing you want to do before you do anything, I'm going to go ahead and put this to quarter. And then press Control Alt T to enable time remapping. Or go to like I think it's layer. Wait, no, no, no. You just right click it, time and time remap. If you if that shortcut doesn't work for you, enable time remapping. And then press the right square bracket key right next to the P key to go to the end of the clip. And I would just delete this. It gives you more space to work in the graph editor. And just press the other square bracket key to bring it back. And so on this first beat, um, hold shift and then you can snap right to it. And then press that left square bracket key to move it there. And I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, make this a little bit, make the work area a little bit smaller. Just so we can kind of see what we're dealing with. And you know, there we go. So now we're pretty much just going to be syncing the clip because that's all we're going to be worrying about in this tutorial. So since this is the first keyframe, I want the shot. I, mean, I want I want the um, clip to like jump in. So I kind of you have to like play around with it and find different ways you want it to start. And so he's running. So I have him take like one more step, like right here. He starts taking this step, and then at the next keyframe, I go ahead and move it to where he starts aiming and I can already see I kind of messed up right where he starts aiming and so I'm just going to drag this a little bit further ahead like that okay so I'm going to have it he's going to be stepping in like this and so as you can see it only moves like that because we haven't made any more keyframes so everything else is just going to be a freeze frame and I had the shot right here but for me um, I actually go because some people do it differently. I go one frame before the shot and then I make sure I have my keyframe on that one frame before the shot. And then I put it all the way up to where you can see the the scope but not where it actually scopes in. And then I go three keyframes forward and then I drag it to where you can see the scope after a shot. So if you go look at it you get a little bit of that action where it looks like he's quick scoping him and this is pretty much only for like if he's like actually like looking down at the scope for like a couple seconds you don't want to you want you don't want to show that in the edit that's pretty much what that's for but I just do it for every shot and then I had a jump right here where he rechambers the bullet that's a pretty good place to put it and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and press the decimal key what could have been my to preview the audio really what could have been so I had two beats I had two beats where the clip jumps so it jumps right here and then it's gonna jump right here and so I'm just gonna drag this forward a little bit as well I kind of moved it to where he's also aiming in again and then this is where the next shot was and I oh, forgot to go one keyframe before that and then start doing your keyframes and stuff and then drag it right here is there one more forward I think no yep there we go and then three keyframes forward or however many you want depends you know play around with it there's no exact way to syncing and so that's pretty much how the rest of it's gonna go and you can kind of see what I'm, what I'm doing with it I'm trying to go faster 
wife. So I won't spend too much time on it. Been my lady wife. So this is where this is where the third shot's gonna be. And if you saw in the preview, I don't know if you noticed or not, when he turns and everything, you notice a lot of frame blending. See, this is frame blending right here. I have it turned on already. If you don't, you just turn on, you just click it, and then you click this right here twice, and it enables frame blending, and it makes everything a lot smoother. And for some of the the warping and stuff, uh, motion blur does a good job of hiding that, but what I've noticed when I've been using it is when he actually like spins like say if he like does like a 180 and turns behind him there's a lot of warp in that so I kind of left that in the preview so you guys can see what that looks like and I'm gonna show you guys how to actually fix that when we get to that point in the tutorial and so here we go we have two more jumps see so this is where it happens and I pretty much had it where he turned around he stopped and so you get this warp right here and the way you can fix that you can just like play around with the keyframes a little bit if you want but you're never really gonna get rid of it fully so what I usually do is I like I usually split the clip as he's turning and then I split it when he stops turning and I just go ahead and turn frame blending off for that layer completely so you because you, you can't really like tell if the frame blending is on or not because he's spinning because uh, it's not really a slow motion and so here's another jump beat. I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to put it when he's aiming in. Or just like that. And I'm, I'm not spending too much time on it. I spent a lot of time when I was actually making it though. Just so I can pretty much have it perfect. So you guys could see how nice it looks when it turns out. And so I'm probably not even going to finish syncing it. This is probably good enough for the sake of, uh, for the sake of the tutorial. I'm sinking four shots with the spin. Oh, I think I messed up here. So this is where the end is, and the beginning is going to be right here before he shoots. Yeah, I messed up. Okay, there we go. It's fixed now, though. Okay. So now you see. So I'm just going to pretend like I want it to stop right here. Even though the clip's not over, I'm just going to pretend it stops and just press Alt and then the right square bracket key. And so once you have everything done right here, I'm going to go ahead and highlight all these keyframes. Press F9 on your keyboard to easy ease them. And then, you know, go ahead and go into this graph editor and click this right here if these aren't highlighted at all so you can see all of them at once. And then just go methodically through it. <laughs> Not methodically, but you know what I mean. And the first one, you know, if you want to look at it in more detail, which I always do and I always recommend, if you can unclick that, hold control and scroll up and you can kind of see more of it and zoom in. And so since this is like a beginning of the clip and it kind of comes in strong with the song, I just usually drag this more to the side and more like that. And then same thing with the next one because there's two beats. And so kind of make a little S shape. And since this is the shot, I usually drag this down a little bit more because I want it to go built like fast and build up to the shot. And then you don't really have to touch this right here. Again, these are the two keyframes that you have like where the shot is. So I don't really touch those. You can if you want, but I usually don't. And then I want it to come fast off the shot. So I sometimes drag this up and then have this like slow right there. And then after each change I make, I always do a quick little RAM preview. So we can kind of see. This is a letter to so that already looks pretty sick. And uh, you can see some warp right here, but once you put motion blur on that motion blur on it, you can it kind of fixes itself. Um, but you know I'm not gonna do that right now because you guys know how to do that. It's just a preset if you have it. And so there we go. Let's go ahead and keep working. Um, we're gonna scroll over, hold control while scrolling down so I can see more of this. And then, you know, these are just the two jumps. You don't have to like put too much effort in doing these. You just have to drag them up and down. And then this is the next shot. So drag this one down and then this one up a little bit. Give it some slow-mo. And then, you know, just keep it going. I'm just going to keep going through it. I'm not going to spend, like I said, <laughs> I've said this a bunch, I'm not going to spend too much time. But I urge you guys, you know, take as much time as you can 
to make it look perfect. And so that's just pretty much a rough going through it really quick just to get it done and RAM preview it so you can see it. So obviously that looks extremely choppy and I get that but uh, I'm not gonna like go and fix it. Basically how you would fix that is you would go back in and tweak every single one that needs to be tweaked until you get that final stage of what you want it to look like and that's pretty much how you would do that and so to get rid of this warp when he's turning because it, it gets really bad right here like noticeable there's noticeable warp here but motion blur fixes that honestly in my opinion but it, it doesn't fix the one like it doesn't fix it when he's turning so to fix that he starts turning about right here so make sure your clip is selected and then go to edit I think and then it's split layer or control shift D and it splits it and then I'm gonna go to when he stops spinning so the spinning stops about right there and then go to composition or no go to edit split layer again and then for this layer in between just turn frame blending off and so now you can see he's turning and you don't see too much frame blend but the problem that could occur with that is um you can start you can see you can start to see frames dropping and so if you see that you want to go press u and then make sure this clip is the one that's selected and then select keyframe and go back into the graph editor and then you would have to readjust these keyframes to make it so it looks fine and honestly that's pretty much it that's the method i use for um syncing sniping clips with timer map and uh, I hope you guys learned from it. You know, again, the uh, project file is going to be in the description if you want to follow along with the clip and everything. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, my DMs are open on Twitter if you have any questions. And I always try to read all my comments and I always try to reply to them. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. I'm out. Peace.